I'm back. I know. I know it's a different setup. I know it's a different mug. There's a lot of things to dislike right off the jump, but it's all really good stuff, I promise. You can even hear the birds chirping. Come on, you don't get that in Philly, man. You get that in Maine. So here's the deal. I am currently back up in Maine, back at the Center for Furniture Craftsmanship, teaching a class with my shop mate and great friend Larissa Huff. It has been a fantastic week so far, and just before this, we were teaching another class in Vermont at Hatch Space on box making. And guys, I really have missed teaching. Like, it's such a delight to get to spend time with people who are interested and passionate about growing their skill set, about making objects. But there's something about the first time that you make a thing that's different, right? I still have the first box I ever made. I still look at the first piece I ever designed as a little bit different from all of the other pieces because it's the first time you realize your capacity in something, and that's really special. And that's why I love teaching, and I've missed that, and it's been such a delight for the last week and a half to be back in it full time. Anyway, I digress. So here's the deal. Given that I can't film what we would call a normal video this week, I'm not in my shop, I'm not working on a commission, I'm gonna give you guys what I'm now calling Two Minute Tip Tuesdays on Saturday. So that's what we're gonna do. The class that I'm currently teaching is called Just Joinery. It is not a project-based class, it is a technique-based class. Meaning, we're not building anything specific, we're going over a bunch of joinery techniques, both hand tool and machine. And so, I'm gonna put two minutes on the clock, and we're gonna talk about hand tool joinery versus machine joinery, so let's go. But first, <sighs> delicious every time. So the first question that people are always going to ask is, isn't hand tool joinery slower than machine cut joinery? Kinda, mostly, but not always. Here's the deal. When you are making a single object, the amount of joinery that you need to do is limited. Building a jig, setting up a machine, and executing it on that machine is probably fast, but the setup time it takes doesn't pay out as much as if you were cutting 50 or 100 of that particular joint as you would be doing in production work. So there may be times, and not always, there may be times where cutting it by hand is faster because you don't have to go through the process of machine setup or jig building. That's point one. Point two, isn't hand cut joinery harder than machine cut joinery? Isn't it more difficult to execute properly? No, they're just different skill sets. They're entirely different skill sets. When you can combine the two into one and you have both skill sets, then, in my opinion, you become limitless at what you can do. Keep in mind that machines have limitations. For example, they make things straight and they make things parallel, but they also make things round. So it's difficult to get square ends when you're using a rotating bit. So if you need crisp, clean ends, if you need square ends, it's easier to do those by hand or square up what was left over by a machine. So integrating hand tools into your workflow can add a great deal of potential to your design choices. Now last but certainly not least, isn't hand cut joinery sloppier than machine cut joinery? No, not at all, they're just two different skill sets and if you don't know how to cut things by hand then they will be sloppier until you learn how to cut them by hand accurately. The same exact way that if you were to cut them by machine at first they will be sloppy, loose, and ugly until you learn how to dial a machine in properly. Oh, did I make it? Did I do it? I think that's too, I think I did it. I think I got it under two minutes. Once I cut out all the breaths and the size, I think I'm good. And now for the bonus tip of the week, because let's be real, we knew I was never gonna keep this under two minutes. If you are getting into one or the other, either hand tools for the first time or machines for the first time, you don't need to purchase brand new expensive equipment. Is it nice to have those things? Absolutely. But in order to start making things and expanding those skill sets, you can buy used tools, you can buy old tools, and they will get the job done. Don't feel like you need to spend $2,500 if you don't have $2,500. 
go buy used tools, go to garage sales, go to flea markets, go see what you can find. Find interesting things and start to integrate them into your workflow and see if you enjoy it before investing in those newer tools. So that's it. That's my two minute Tuesday tip on a Saturday for you guys. I'm gonna continue on teaching this week and enjoying the process. I hope you guys get in the shop and enjoy the process some. And if you're interested in taking a class with me in the future, I will post my schedule sometime early next year when I get it actually finalized. There have been a couple of folks in both of these classes who uh, signed up because they were fans of the channel. And it's a delight to get to meet them, to spend some time with them. But until then, friends, get in the shop, go make a thing, go enjoy the process, and I'll see y'all next week. Cheers.